all probably heard, I know you probably not you've heard it over and over again. I thought it could be preached until Jesus comes. Amen. And uh, I thought about this. I thought about the things that are going on in the world. And I thought about how people, um, how they uh, overlook the book of Acts. Trying to find salvation and everything but the book of Acts. But you can't find it. I got these I got these telemarketers calling me. And so I said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I said, Peter said, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. And they'll hang up. Sometimes I get to tell them, well, I'm glad you give me an opportunity to talk to you. Amen. About Jesus. Amen. You know? And I thought, and, and so this thought had, uh, in fact, I preached on a little bit this Sunday on this thought I'm going to bring to you now. Uh, I probably won't be having you too long, but uh, can you get, Brother Travis, can you get uh, uh, Church Triumphant on me up here on this? Thing? Huh? The Church Triumphant song? Yeah. Ken, I don't want it up right now, but I want you to, uh, if you will, we're going to sing a little bit. Amen. I've got good news to bring, and that is why I sing. All my joy with you I'll share. Amen. In Matthew chapter uh, 16, and starting at verse 17, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Jesus, amen, is going to build his church. So Peter stood up on this rock. And that rock is about Peter. And even though his name is stone, amen, talking about Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Amen. That we're going to build the church on. Thank God. And I'm just glad, amen, that I know that. I thought uh, the Bible says that he'd make it that a fool couldn't err therein. Amen. And I thought, you know, these folks that read this Bible and it's plain as nose on your face, and yet they ignore it. You know, they, they, they just say, no, nah, that's not necessary. You know, I've heard folks that say, oh, you don't have to do that. Thank you. But you have to, if it's in the Word of God, you have to do that. Amen. All right. Get that song up there. It's the old ship of Zion. It's hope for the lost and dying. It's a soul saving station. That's the Lord's power of salvation. It's the church triumphant, O oh Lord, and it's filled. By the hand of the Lord. And you can help me. <laughs> I'm talking about the church. The book of Revelation. It's built on the rock. It's got a firm foundation. It's been through the flood. And it's been through the fire. But one of these days, the church is going to move up higher. It's the church triumphant, O oh Lord. And it's built by the hand of the Lord. It's been through the storm, but the storm couldn't turn it. It's been through the fire, but the fire couldn't burn it. It's been fed to the lions, but the lion couldn't eat it. Fall a lot of wars, but never defeated. It's a church 
triumphant, O Lord, and is built by the hands of the Lord. Amen. It's built by the hand of the Lord. Amen. He said, uh, he told Peter, he said, nothing is going to tear this church down. Amen. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I was thinking on these things. I thought, you know, I thought about Peter. Peter denied the Lord. A lot of times folks said, oh, you mean Peter denied the Lord. They tell you that. You know, yes, he did. But Peter didn't have the Holy Ghost then because Jesus told him. And he said, you're going <coughs> to deny me three times. going to not deny me three times. And Peter said, nah, not me, I'll pick my sword out, I'm, I'm sticking right with you. No, he meant it. I mean, right then and there, there's times we say things that we mean it, and then we have to change our mind, or, or something else happens. But Peter meant what he said that day. And Lord, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll die with you. He said, I'm going to work. You know, he said, because he, he really did uh, have the love of God in his life, but he didn't have the Holy Ghost. He didn't have the power of God in his life, amen, to help him to overcome these things. Hallelujah. Amen. I thought, you know, Peter said, uh, uh, the Lord said, you know, I'm going to build my church, and I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to give you the authority, amen, uh, to build this church. Amen. And I thought, you know, here... Peter, amen, got the authority to build a kingdom. And you got folks saying, well, you don't have to do that. Yes, you do. You can't go over Peter's word. I thought when Peter preached to the Gentiles first, nobody else could preach to him but him because he had the key. Amen. He went down there and opened that door up. Now, old Cornelius, we don't know how long he's been praying. We don't know how long, amen, that he was seeking the Lord. We don't know how long he was, you know, but... Finally, the angel of the Lord came to him. He said, Cornelius, he said, your prayers and your alms has come before the Lord, a memorial before God, he said. Can you believe that? How would you like having an angel come visit you? Say, hey, you got this and that before God. Amen. This man, amen, because he was a humble man. I'll tell you what, you can't get the Holy Ghost out of humble. You cannot. You can tell Iron Man say. I told God, if you want my life, you take it. He said, give me the Holy Ghost. I, I'm almost hard to believe that. Amen. But he said, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to be like a little child. Amen. Let a woman say, you know, that, well, she said, uh, I was at this church praying and crying going on. This woman said, what do you want? She said, I want the Holy Ghost. She said, well, my brother will teach you how to speak in tongues. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's who they think they are. They're not God. Amen. God building his church. Amen. He said there's no unclean things going to walk there on. You cannot go any other way but God's way. <coughs> Amen. Because it's in his word. It's in his word. I want you to know, and he, he means what he says, says what he means. I think you know about poor old Abraham, or, uh, Moses when he went through 40 years in the wilderness with the, uh, those uh, Israelites, and they wanted water, and they saw the miracles that God had performed over and over and over and over. And yet, it's, it's like some of us. Uh, me, I get uh, me. I, I I want things done now. I don't have any patience. Okay, I want God to do things. I want you to do it now, Lord. You know why? Why ain't this already done? You know. It doesn't work like that. My wife says, you got to have patience. Amen. But well, it might cost too much. I don't know. <laughs> but I want you to know God, amen, uh, has, has his own way. He, <clears throat> he made a plan, and he wants us to follow it. I thought he gave it to a man of God. He did not give it to an angel. Amen. He didn't have an angel come down here, amen, and preach to us. He didn't have an angel come down here. And, and, uh, and tell somebody how to be saved. I thought, you know, when he told his disciples, he said, you go back to Jerusalem, you tarry there, keep being due with power from one high. 
Amen. And I want you to know, uh, they went back there. 500 went back there, but 380 of them got tired of waiting. You know, they missed out. These other 20, they were going to hang in there. They got a bulldog hold on God. We're going to hang in here until Jesus keeps his promise. And he keeps his promise. Amen. You can't, you can't not uh, uh, say that he doesn't because the Bible says he keeps his promise. And we know that. We know he's done things for us. Amen. He's healed us. Amen. Uh, you know, a lot of us, if it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't be here right now. Amen. Because he decides. And one thing about I love about this book is, amen, uh, and I'm not, I'm not mentioning to you about, he said that uh, he makes it so plain fool couldn't err therein, amen, because it's plain as a nose on your face. He, he didn't make it any complicated. Now, people have co- made it complicated, this uh, gospel, you know what I mean, and <clears throat> saying, oh, there's an easier way. No, because the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. So God has the best way. Yes, we have troubles and trials. Yes, we have things come up on it. Yes, amen, folks, uh, my... Give us trouble. And they might talk about it. They might say this or that. But hey, doesn't make any difference. Amen. We're going to heaven by the grace of God. And I think about you folks. I thought, God, you know, I pray for you. I said, no, I want to go to heaven with these folks. I want to walk on the streets of gold with these folks. Amen. Because one of these days, he come back after a bride. And that bride's going to have his name. Amen. Without having his name. I'm hoping that, you know, that somehow or another we'll get to, get to reach them with the Word of God. I don't want anybody. There's nobody in this world I want to see lost. I don't have enough enemies to tell them to be lost. You know what I mean? Because I know I read the book. It's going to be torment throughout eternity. <clears throat> and who wants to people see people go through torment? Amen. <clears throat> That's terrible. <clears throat> I think about that. I think... <clears throat> And then think, oh God, what is it? All these billions and billions of people. And they're not saved. I said, there ought to be more Christians than sinners. But there's not. People just don't want to live right. They want to do their own thing. No, I had a man tell me some time back. He said, call me out in the, out in the, from the restaurant. He said, oh, Lord, I want to talk to you. I said, Okay. He says, you don't have to live like that. I said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> That's right. You've you got to live like that if you want to go to heaven. Now, if you want to go to heaven, you can do anything you want to do. You can act any way you want to act. Amen. <clears throat> and I, I thought, you know, here, uh, but they, when they read the word, if they would read what God told Peter, amen, and obey, and, and Peter, he told Peter, he said, and not the other apostles, too. I thought about this. I thought it crossed my mind. He said, you know, he said, you're going to be brought before judges and kings. He said, don't worry about what you're going to say. It's going to be the Holy Ghost. You know? I thought, here, when Peter and them was uh, brought before the Sanhedrin court, and he said, <clears throat> haven't we told you not to preach or teach in that name anymore? And he said, and then the Holy Ghost came begin to move on Peter. He said, we've got to obey God. It says, brother, obey God than man. Amen. And so therefore, they, uh, they obeyed God. They told him about what God had done and things. And they knew that, you know. And I thought about the scripture. They said, when they crucified Jesus, they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. You know, the thought crossed my mind when they said that, when that cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. So, you know, he did not hold that against them. He forgave them right there. Amen. They could have, they could have, uh, uh, could have uh, had that blood up on their hands and their children, but Jesus said, forgive them. Amen. And so, therefore, 
We just have to uh, believe God, take Him at His word, amen. And I thought, you know, here, uh, when, when, when Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, amen, uh, he, on the day of Pentecost, when they was there, and, I, and that's another thing I thought about too. Only 3,000 people out of millions that were there that received the Lord. Can you believe that? Only 3,000 were convicted, you know, and they said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Old Peter didn't take that key and unlock it. He said, repent, turn away from your wicked ways. Amen. Don't do those things you used to do anymore. Amen. When people repent, uh, they'll ask the Lord to forgive them for everything they've ever done. You don't say, you know, if you want my life, take it. Amen. He wants you to come to an altar of prayer. Amen. He gives you an opportunity. The Bible says he humble himself. You humble yourself. Amen. I think James said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen. And that's what we got to do. we got to be like a little kid. You know, you can do something to a little kid, and five minutes later, they'll forget what they've done, what you did to them. Amen. So I'm glad, amen, that God has given us the opportunity to tell folks, amen. And I like that song, let's go on, let's go on, talking about this good old way. Amen. I'm not going to hold you long, but I just, and this thought crossed my mind. I thought, you know, uh, why people don't receive this word is uh, something that I can't figure out. You know, I guess because I'm just old and stupid or whatever. But when they so educated, I mean, they can read it. They can read what uh, things said, you know, that uh, when when Jesus uh, told Peter to sit up on this, Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I thought, you know, uh, there's nothing that's going to tear the church down. That song said, it's been through the fire, the fire couldn't burn. I thought about the three Hebrew children. Amen. They went through the fire. All they did was just set them free. Amen. thought about old Daniel. You no, know, he was walking down to that old den of lions. Amen. And he didn't know uh, whether God was going to deliver him or not, but I believe he had a feeling of, of peace. You know. Amen. I believe he had a peace. And he went there and he thought, like the Hebrew children, he said, even if he doesn't deliver us from you, from this fire, but he will from you. And then the king had made a, a, a degree or something, you know, that they're not to worship any other god, but the God of, of, of Daniel and the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. And so therefore, I know that uh, he uh, just uh, was a worshiper of God. He loved God. Amen. And he just uh, seemed like he just couldn't uh, do enough for God. He wasn't afraid of the king's, king's order. He was going to pray. Three times a day. And there's a, a place that uh, I, I read a, a little thing that this guy had, and uh, it said that on the on this guy's property, you're not allowed to have any religious thing on your shirt, religious thing on your hat. I thought I couldn't work there. Amen. Because I carry a tractor in my pocket every day. I don't care where I'm at. I wear my hat every day. You know what I mean? God gave me that hat. I'm going to close. Amen. I'm just, I don't feel like I'm doing any good. I'm just going to just close up. Amen. God gave me that hat and said, will you wear that hat? I said, I sure will. <laughs> Amen. Brother Deep and Hoffman, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I was sitting there thinking as Brother Lloyd was talking. Speaking on tonight, I've said three Hebrew boys that were stuck in that fire. My mind immediately went to them, and I try to picture. You ever just try to picture yourself there? Give just kind of mental picture of what it must have been like. And 
The Bible said they heated that thing up seven times hotter, if I remember correctly. Amen. And uh, that when the guard opened up the door, he was consumed by the fire. Amen. If I remember this correctly, the story correctly. You know, uh, we don't realize sometimes that, you know, uh, God is with us sometimes in, in situations where we don't realize that those same situations that were meant to destroy us are going to free us up. Amen. Praise God. And I'll tell you what, I, I thank you for that word. This church is going to live. You know, we, I, I talked about this Sunday. You know, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And I'll tell you what, uh, Brother Lord, there was, people's hearts were on evil continually, the Bible said. You know, there were educated folks there. You know, you're talking about these educated folks. Folks' hearts just get hardened. The Bible tells us, harden not your hearts, he said, when you see that day coming. He said, don't, don't get hard-hearted. He said, don't, you know, don't get so... Uh, caught up because, you know, uh, we are creatures of shock. That's what I like to call it. Until we're shocked into something, sometimes we don't, we don't respond. You know what I mean? To something shocking happens. You know, someone all of a sudden breaks into our house, then we decide we want deadbolts after, after the fact. Or we, have to, we have to be, I hate to say it like this, we have to be shocked into doing stuff sometimes. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and I tell you what, God's been giving us warnings left and right. Amen. But the world's hardening their hearts so they don't see it. When you got folks wanting to have abortion mills, amen, to the point now where, my goodness, they're, you know, it's just straight from that side now. It's not even a, we're not even going to bother, you know, actually talking like it's partial birth abortion and all this other stuff. Not that I've agreed with it in the first place, but I mean, now we're to the point where it's just, it has nothing to do with the mother. My goodness, to bring the baby right outside the womb and then decide whether they want to kill it or not. Well, I don't know if y'all know this or not. That's what's been in the news here recently. And then they're cheering about it. I mean, folks, I, I'm trying to tell you what you're seeing. I mean, this should be shocking us. I remember a few years back, and it, I, it's been several years ago, I guess it was, during the, uh, when the whole ISIS thing and all that stuff was going on, and there was uh, people, you know, being beheaded and whatnot, and they wanted someone to see it on YouTube. I said, I don't want to see that. Why would I want to see that? What, what, what macabre person would want to just sit there and look at that? I have no desire. The Bible says, what's with things are good? What's things are pure? What's things are lovely? Think on these things. I, I ain't got no desire to look at that. Are you kidding me? You know? But if that's what it takes to get you shocked into believing something's going on in this world today, folks, I'm here to tell you, I'm, you know, you ought not be hard in your hearts in this day. This ain't a day and an hour where you should just, you know, uh, treat God as if he's just another thing to do. He been because he's not. He been. I mean, this church is going somewhere, and God's got a church, whether you're part of it or not. It's your business, but you got to have to want to be a part of that church. Amen. You have to want to be a part of His church. Amen. You got to stop sinning. Amen. And you got to go to heaven. It's real simple. Amen. It's really not that hard. Amen. And you just got to want to serve God because I'm going to tell you something. It, it's getting harder and harder. It's getting harder and harder, amen, to keep, keep, keep your prayer life straight. It gets harder and harder to read your Bible. It gets harder because this world, man, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's trying to consume us. It's trying to consume us, and you've got to get, you got to figure it out. But you know what? I've got to get my feet firmly planted on this thing, and whatever thing seems to come up that can easily take me away, I can't let it take me away. I've got to keep my mind on the prize, amen. My, my heart my focus has got to be there. Amen, because this church is going somewhere, Brother Lord. You're exactly right. It is the church triumphant. Amen. This thing is the church of the living God. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will tell you something. It's still Acts 2, 30. Amen. Praise God. He's going to, upon that rock, he's going to build his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It will not prevail against it. It will not prevail against it. Amen. Because I can assure you there's going to come a day, amen, that the Bible makes it very clear when that day Amen. That there's going to come a great falling away, the scripture says. And that day is occurring even as we speak. It is. Amen. There's a lot of people going to come after teachers having itching ears. Amen. They want to go after those things. Amen. That's uh, leaving, the, leaving the tenements of this faith. Amen. And going after things they ought not to go after. Amen. Why? Because it appeals to the flesh at the end of the day. I can be easy at the same time. Folks, if you ever wanted to grab hold of holiness, you ought to do it now. You ought to grab hold of righteousness, it ought to be now. Amen. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Thank you, Brother Lloyd. I appreciate that word tonight. Amen. Praise God. Don't worry, it don't have to be 45 minutes all the time or 30 minutes all the time. Amen. 
God can do more in 10 minutes sometimes than we can do in two hours. Praise God. And I, I appreciate that word tonight. Amen. Just a reminder. Amen. We are, we are serving a God. Now, we said the same thing Sunday and he said here Wednesday night. Amen. You need to get in and stay in and get your mind straightened and focused on this, on this kingdom. Amen. Because if the devil can distract you, he will distract you. I'm going to say it again. If the devil can distract you, he will distract you. He will distract you. Amen. Well, praise God. Praise God. Because you, whether you all know it or not, but when you all doing this fasting this week, you're stirring up stuff. You're stirring it up. Amen. You're stirring in your house. I guarantee your kids are going to drive you crazy this week. Yes, they will. Your job's going to drive you crazy this week. Yes, it will. Hello? Your family members are going to drive you crazy this week. Yes, they will. I'm telling you. When you start stirring it up, but you know what? This is where you get your victory, too. Amen. It's where you get your victory because God will step in. You hear me? God will step in. Praise God. Y'all know the folks in the, I, I don't. I need to shut up, but I will, I promise. But you know those folks, and when they walked into the tabernacle, there's a whole lot of dust on the ground. Anytime you start moving through that tabernacle, you start stirring up dust. Amen. Closer you start getting to God, you'll start stirring up some dust. Amen. Always remember. Praise God. So I'll bow our heads and our hearts right now. I want to just I want you to just lift your hands into the Lord for just a moment. Would you do it? Amen. Praise God. Sometimes we just need a reminder today that we are part of his kingdom. The first thing is the revelation of who he is and what he wants from your life. Sometimes we just have to remind ourselves in prayer, Lord, I am yours and you're mine. Help me, oh God, to hold on to this thing. Lord, because there are Oh God, try to get me to take my fingers off of this thing. Those who want me to lose my grip. Lord, I know, Lord God, in whom I believe, whom I serve today. There are those, oh God, that uh, say that they don't believe any of this stuff. There are those, oh God, that say there's nothing to it. Lord, we know better, Lord God, because you've been with us, oh God. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for your hand upon our lives here today. But more than all of these things, oh God, Lord, we know, Lord God, that those things that are sh- now, Lord God, and they said there wouldn't be, be shaken here, they can be shaken, will be shaken, and Lord, we're praying today, Lord God, that we can hold on, oh God, not just to hold on because of who you are, Lord God, but Lord, we know, Lord God, that there is a calling, a higher place for us, Lord God, in you today, Lord, we know, Lord God, that there are things that you've got designed for us and planned for us, but Lord, yet we come out victorious on this thing, Lord God, give us strength, oh God, and help us to be an overcomer, Lord God. Lord Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony here today. Lord, I pray now, Lord, bless each and every individual here tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight that you've brought forward here today. Once again, reminding us that we're part of a great church here today. You said in a great house are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor both, Lord God. Lord, we pray now, Lord God, as we're dismissed here tonight, Lord God, that you would encamp your angels about us all this day. Lord, keep your hand upon each and every one of us, Lord God. Watch over us to my meet again in the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.